Hi, everybody, and welcome to Hat Day of late April 2021 of Observing with Webb, uh, where a high school astronomy teacher tells you what you're looking at, why it's so cool, and what you should check out later this month at night. Uh, again, welcome to April of 2021. We've got some uh, mornings and some evenings that have some uh, lunar encounters. We also have a meteor shower this month, the Lyrids. So um, we got to stay up a little bit later to get those dark skies. But uh, well, with that, let's uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so what planets uh, are you going to be able to see this month? Well, basically, we've got some, you've got one sunset planet, and that is Mars over here. You can see it. Uh, it is above Taurus at the beginning of the month, okay, right up there. And then toward the end of the month, let me go to the 30th. Uh, it is actually up in Gemini, and it's uh, far above Orion and Taurus. So, all you have to do to find this one is look to the southwest. Uh, it's going to be over there in the southwest, west, southwest, um, and look well, about two thirds of the way, halfway up the sky, uh, and find that non twinkling reddish orange dot, and that is Mars. Now it's getting closer to the horizon every day, uh, so in a couple months we uh, won't really be able to see it. So uh, get out there and enjoy it. Now, throughout the night, you don't really have any planets to look at. However, you will have some planets over in the east in the morning. So let me go to April 1st, and let's go to, in the a.m., let's go a little bit before. Let's get that sun just rising. There we go. Right there, you see Jupiter and Saturn. Now you see them in the southeast. We've got those two nice gas giants there. They're going to get higher and rise earlier every day. As you notice, as I bring the dates up, it gets a little bit higher. But then the sun also rises a little bit earlier. But they're still higher and higher, and they rise earlier and earlier each day until April 30th. They're still in that same general area, but they are definitely higher than they were on the 1st. Okay, now Jupiter is going to be the brighter one down and to the left, and Saturn's going to be the less bright one up and to the right, about 15 degrees. So if you hold your fist out at arm's length and maybe add, oh wait, no, do this, I'll rock on, too much metal, uh, do that, and that's about as far as they're going to be from, from your eyesight, or relative to you. All right, so again, Jupiter and Saturn uh, in the mornings and Mars in the evenings. So we've got three events and then what's going on with the moon. So let's start with the moon. It starts off as a waning gibbous. That means it is mostly lit and it rises later at night till it reaches the last quarter moon on the 4th. The, that is then visible from midnight into the morning. The, uh, the morning crescents then come after that from the 5th to the 10th, and then on the 11th is the new moon. And of course, after the new moon, you get those evening crescents. You just look west after sunset. And then on the 20th is when you'll have the first quarter moon. The right half is lit up, visible the first half of the night. After that, you got the evening gibbous moons and then the full moon on the 26th and then it resets to waning gibbous after that. Now, as far as the three events go, especially starting with the moon, let's go to April 5th. Now, April 5th, we've got a nice close encounter. It's actually the 5th, 6th, and 7th. You notice here, in the southeast, in the morning, uh, we've got Jupiter, Saturn, and the moon. Now, on the 5th, they're about the same distance away from each other. But then on the 6th, the moon goes right below Saturn. Uh, in fact, it's only about mm, 4 degrees under Saturn. And then on the morning of the 7th, the moon is about 5 degrees under Jupiter. So these three mornings are just great nights to go find the moon and 
Jupiter and Saturn to see where they are. Maybe you haven't found them before. I suggest getting out there between 5 and 6 a.m. Uh, because then it's still dark enough to see them easily. Uh, but the sun hasn't come up. And uh, they're, they're up above the horizon at that point, too. So 5th to the 7th, Jupiter, Saturn, and the Moon. Now, 10 days later, on the 15th, well, the Moon's not there anymore because it is over in the West hanging out with some of the other planets. Now, let's go to the actual nighttime. Ah, there we go. Actually, hanging out with one other planet. Uh, so if we go to April 15th, you see over here in the West, uh, you'll be able to see Taurus and a nice, beautiful crescent moon on the 15th. And Mars is up here. So you get a nice view of a lot of good stuff. Taurus, the Pleiades, Mars, and Orion all in one shot. Really great to look at. And then on the 16th, the moon is right in between Taurus and Mars. And then on the 17th, it's just above Mars. So that's a really good night if you just want to go out and start looking at some stuff in the telescope or just looking at stuff. Um, those would be three very good nights. And lastly, which just so happens to be on the 22nd, is the Lyrid meteor shower. Now, I don't really have much to show you here, except I do want to show you what the sky is going to look like in the morning, okay? And especially if we take a nice little look toward, toward the north, northeast. Now, what you're going to see way up high, almost straight above you, is Lyra the Harp, right? And let's see, you can see Cygnus the Swan. Oh, wait, those are some of the summer constellations. Now, the Lyrid meteor shower is on the 22nd, and it's a decent year for it. The reason I say it's decent is because if we actually go, let me zoom out here a little bit. If we actually go back a couple hours, there's something out here, the moon, that is providing a lot of light pollution. But by, looks like 3.34 in the morning, the moon is gone. So you have a nice, clear night to look at some meteors. Now you can look at the meteors. You can look for the meteor shower while the moon is out. That's fine. In fact, the ones you see are going to be the brightest ones, uh, but you're just going to see fewer. So you've got to pick your balance. Do you want to see more and get up early at four in the morning? Or do you want to get out and just see a couple and not have to go to bed or wake up at odd times. So anyway, uh, the Lyrid meteor shower is about 10 to 20 meteors per hour. So it's a minor shower, but it's still pretty good. And uh, the one thing that you want to think about here are two things you want to think about. One, they should all be coming from Lyra. So when you look out, you kind of want to look north, but you want to look at the whole sky. Okay, you don't just want to look at one constellation. You don't want to look through a telescope. Uh, you also want to make sure you, you are using red light if you want to see anything. And don't be staring at uh, the TikToks while you're doing this because you're just going to, you know, well, A, you're not going to be paying attention. And B, it's going to mess up your night vision. The second thing is that um, these meteors that you see are little pieces of debris, space debris from comets that the Earth's orbit is crashing into. And when they crash, it's at over 100,000 miles per hour. And because of that, the meteors, these little pieces of space dust, uh, crush the atmosphere in front of it, which heats up the atmosphere, which heats it up, which makes those beautiful, wonderful streaks of light. Okay. Um, best advice, get a hammock, sit down in the hammock with a blanket. It's the best way to do it. Okay. And that, that's it. So 22nd is the meteor shower. 15th to the 17th is uh, Mars and the moon and other stuff. And then the 5th to the 7th is the morning planets with the moon. Are you going to be able to see this month? I'll start off with after dinner, then right before bed, and then before work in the mornings. So after dinner, 
Well, actually, it's still light out until about 8.30. So let's go with 8.30. And around 8.30, if you go out, uh, you should be able to see Orion over here. And I've done this in the past. Follow its belt to the right to uh, Aldebaran, the brightest star in Taurus, the bull. Uh, with the Pleiades over to the right of that, Gemini above it. So for the winter stuff, last chance to see it this month, pretty much. So the other one you want to look at is Leo, because if you just look more to the left, you should be able to find Leo. It's pretty easy to see. It's The stars are very prominent, and you have this backward question mark along with this right triangle to the left of the question mark. Right? Uh, those, those are the basic ones that I would look for. Um, but there are some other ones. In fact, if you wait up a little bit later, let's say you wait till 10 o'clock at night. Okay, not too much changed there. But what you can find is the Big Dipper and Booties or Bootes. So this time, look at Leo, but then kind of look uh, the opposite direction. Kind of look over to the left and you'll find Ursa Major or the Big Bear up here, Big Dipper. Okay. And if you follow this arc that the handle makes, you follow that arc to Arcturus, which is the brightest star in Botes, and then you speed on to Spica. So you've got this curve, and then you follow the arc to Arcturus, and then you speed on to Spica, which is the brightest star in Virgo. Okay. Uh, and lastly, let's say you're going out right before uh, work. Let's say it's, I don't know, four in the morning change that to am and you should be able to find hercules way up high right above you that little red thing right there is the zenith and so hercules this little um uh, keystone shape is pretty easy to find and it's got this beautiful corona borealis which there should be more connections here um, and if you're really good, what you can do is also find the uh, Hercules cluster uh, right in Hercules, which is on the right side of the keystone right there. And I know sometimes it's tough to find, but you just kind of got to star hop a little bit and find this globular cluster of stars. And since it's straight up above you in the mornings, it'll be easier to find than when it's lower on the horizon. It's just in Hercules on that right side near booties, um, but a little bit more toward Eta Hercules right here. All right. Um, so that is it for the month of April. Make sure you get out and see the moon with the planets and definitely make sure to check out that meteor shower on the 22nd. And uh, yeah, with that, I'd like to wish you very clear, dark skies for the month of April.